In October 1961, just in time for the opening of the 22nd Party Congress, uh, a group of Soviet uh, mathematicians, uh, computer specialists, uh, economists, linguists, and uh, other scientists interested in uh, mathematical models and computer simulation published a collection of papers called Cybernetics in the Service of Communism. And in that collection, they offered a wide variety of uh, applications of computers to uh, various problems uh, in uh, science and in the national economy. In particular, they offered to build a network of computer centers all around the Soviet Union uh, that would uh, process economic information uh, on a giant scale and would suggest ways to optimize the functioning of the national economy. At that Congress, 22nd Party Congress, cybernetics, uh, science that provided mathematical models for this type of uh, data processing, was uh, made part of the uh, program. It was actually written into the text of the Communist Party program as one of the sciences that would help in the construction of the material and physical basis of communism. So uh, it seems like the Communist Party was taking these plans to build a nationwide computer network very seriously. And uh, in the West, uh, these type of um, proposals were uh, taken very, very seriously as well. Uh, the CIA set up a special branch to investigate the Soviet cybernetic threat. And uh, advisors of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy also took uh, um, heed and uh, uh, wrote reports for Kennedy and uh, for his administration, emphasizing the need to catch up with the Soviets in the field of uh, cybernetic applications of computers. One of his advisors, Arthur uh, uh, Schlesinger Jr., wrote that um, if we uh, don't catch up with the Soviets, uh, we are finished. And um, eventually, uh, these plans uh, somehow did not come to fruition. There was no nationwide computer network built in the Soviet Union in the 1960s or 70s. Uh, the cybernetic threat never materialized. It turned out that um, the uh, plans to uh, build that computer network were part of a much larger uh, movement among Soviet scientists, uh, cyberneticians, to uh, reform uh, the entire edifice of Soviet science under the banner of cybernetics, under the ban banner of mathematical modeling, uh, computer simulation, as a way to get rid of the Stalinist legacy, uh, which uh, put Soviet science into very rigid, um, a very rigid condition. Uh, Introducing cybernetic models was a way to open up to uh, all sorts of innovations in various sci sciences. And this way, cybernetic biology emerged, cybernetic linguistics, cybernetic economics, and so forth. So under the banner of cybernetic economics, these plans to build a computer network were uh, conceptualized and justified. They were to solve a very serious problem in the Soviet economy. Uh, the uh, innovations and reforms introduced by uh, Khrushchev in the uh, late 1950s, early 60s, uh, with the introduction of regional economic councils and restructuring of the management of the national economy, which was supposed to streamline the management of the economy, actually resulted in uh, tripling the bureaucratic apparatus, reducing the industrial output, and generally putting the economy into a disarray. So, uh, computer at that moment emerged as a sort of a panacea for all these ills. And uh, uh, cyberneticians began promoting uh, economic uh, modeling on computers as a way to optimize the functioning of the, of the Soviet economy to solve these problems without uh, reforming fundamentally uh, the Soviet system, without reforming the economic organization the foundation of uh, Soviet power. We might call these uh, scientists uh, coincidents. They were not dissidents in the sense that they didn't oppose the Soviet regime. They were half consenting to uh, the Soviet mode of operation, but they wanted some reform that wouldn't shake the foundation, but would still make the, the system function well. One of the first proposals in this vein emerged uh, in the military circles 
Um, Colonel An uh, Anatoly Kitov, uh, a specialist in military computing, proposed a network of computer centers, uh, an underground, underground network that would be devoted to military purposes, to processing military information, particularly uh, they would be underground, protected in, in case of direct heat, for um, in anticipation of the uh, uh, possible uh, military action. But uh, while uh, in, in peacetime, these uh, uh, computer centers would not be uh, uh, would not have to process that much information, he reasoned. So we could occupy these computer facilities with solving economic problems. So it would be a dual purpose network. Uh, in the peacetime, it would process economic information. In the military time, it would be mobilized to solve military problems. I must say that the military didn't like the proposal. Uh, they said they didn't want to combine military and civilian functions on, on military facilities, but I guess some of the more uh, sound reasoning on their part was that they were afraid that they might get blamed for uh, various economic inefficiencies in the Soviet Union, so they decided to stay out of this type of uh, um, project. So uh, uh, the, the project was shelved. Uh, Kitov was actually expelled from the Communist Party for uh, initiating this proposal, lost his position at the Computational Center Number 1 of the Ministry of Defense. So uh, at, the, at that moment, in the late 1950s, these plans were stalled. They were revived in the early 1960s uh, when uh, Deputy Prime Minister Alexei Kosygin, working under Khrushchev, was soliciting proposals to uh, salvage Soviet economy. And at that moment, um, director of the Institute of Cybernetics in Kiev, Viktor Glushkov, and president of the Soviet Academy of Sciences, Mstislav Keldish, came to Kosygin and proposed uh, essentially very similar uh, uh, project, only purely civilian. They proposed uh, installing uh, a large number of computers, essentially in every Soviet enterprise, every factory, every organization, linking them together uh, to regional centers, then uh, linking the regional centers to the central uh, main computation center in Moscow, and processing, uh, collecting all economic information, processing it together, and optimizing uh, the functioning of the national economy. They even said that uh, since all these transactions could be done uh, automatically through computers, uh, even uh, purchases at uh, stores could be done the same way, so we can essentially abolish money. The Soviet economy uh, could uh, become a moneyless economy. And this, uh, they thought, would resonate with some ideas of building communism in the Soviet Union by the year 1980, which was proclaimed just a few years early in the Soviet Union. So uh, they thought that this would fit well with these party plans. Of course, moneyless economy is one of the uh, distinct features of communism according to this uh, Marxist creed. So uh, they, they thought that this would help them sell the proposal, but uh, party officials decided not to stir a controversy with the, with the abolishing of money, and so that part of the proposal was dropped. And the proposal started uh, slowly making its way through the corridors of Soviet bureaucracy. All major Soviet uh, central agencies, like the uh, Central Planning Agency and the Central Statistical Administration, and many, many others, got involved. Each of them wrote a review of that proposal, and each of them wanted to appropriate that proposal. The statisticians wanted to uh, merge this new network with the existing network of statistical stations. The State Planning Committee wanted to subordinate this network to its planning purposes. So essentially, this proposal became a battleground uh, for these competing interests of various government agencies. They uh, essentially reduced this proposal to something uh, very, very modest, uh, essentially strengthening a, a network of statistical, st statistical st stations and not implementing any reform of economic planning and management. Even though the Soviet government, the central Soviet government on the level of deputy prime minister was very enthusiastic about the proposal and even issued a few government resolutions, these resolutions came to naught because they essentially contradicted the interests of uh, some of the very powerful ministries. 
So uh, some uh, computational uh, systems uh, were created to process economic information, but they were created in separate ministries independently. So instead of a, a, a central network, a central connected network of uh, mm, uh, compu computer systems, uh, emerged a patchwork of independent and incompatible computer systems serving the interests of these separate agencies. So each agency uh, had its own computer system that processed its own information from the, for their own purposes. And this, they never wanted to share that information with any other agency. So the idea of optimizing the functioning of the national economy uh, failed because they couldn't put together this information from different agencies. What this story essentially tells us is that computer users uh, have great power of transforming a technological project. If uh, in the United States, early computer networks emerged, although they were funded by the Department of Defense, they emerged in an academic setting. Uh, the Department of Defense funded several uh, computer centers in US universities and then funded a network that linked them. And then that network was actively used by these academic researchers for communication, and uh, they facilitated its growth from below. In the Soviet Union, uh, the users, these uh, ministries, uh, refashioned the project in such a way that it would suit their own purposes. Instead of facilitating the growth of the network, they fractured it into incompatible systems. So uh, the Soviet Union, as a result, never built the internet. Uh, there are many speculations uh, um, why they didn't do it uh, based on the, uh, based on the uh, condition of the Soviet computer industry. Uh, some people say that uh, the computer network wasn't built because, because the hardware wasn't developed well, because software industry wasn't ready. Uh, but the Soviet Union proved that it was capable of overcoming purely technological difficulties with the development of the space program or of the nuclear weapons program. So the, the technological limitations were not the reason why the Soviet Union did not build its own internet. The political reasons uh, prevented the Soviet Union from, from doing this. In the 1970s, uh, with the development of the strategic missile forces, the Soviets realized the need for a nationwide computer network to uh, serve the, in the needs of these uh, missile forces, to connect various missile bases, essentially, uh, to um, launch a nuclear strike at, at, a, at a minute's notice. Also, another network was created uh, within the uh, military sector uh, for missile defense and early warning system. Again, a huge network of early warning stations all around the uh, borders of the Soviet Union was connected to uh, mm, through that network, delivering signals, delivering information about potential threats. So there was a clear military need for a computer, nationwide computer network, and that need was fulfilled. Such networks were built, two independent networks, and they were built with uh, the cutting edge technologies, with uh, datagram switching, which is very similar to technology, very similar to packet switching on which the internet was uh, based. But that uh, technology never left the uh, military sector, the military defense sector. Uh, it was never appropriated by civilian researchers. There was a, a sort of a Chinese wall in the Soviet Union between the military sector and the civilian economy. Uh, the, uh, the military never shared the new technologies they developed with the civilians. Unlike the United States, where the Department of Defense under DARPA, the uh, research project age, the military advanced uh, research project agency facilitated the development of new technologies by civilian universities hoping that these developments would later help the military develop their own uh, military systems. In the Soviet Union, all uh, military R&D was done within the military sectors, behind the fenced walls, and was never shared with the civilians. Finding out more about these military networks is really a, a, a very interesting historical question. Because we know a lot about uh, developments uh, in the Academy of Sciences. Uh, you could go to the archive of the Academy of Sciences and uh, study research reports of academic institutions there. But uh, the uh, 
research reports from the closed military institutions are not available. And uh, we don't know uh, really how far the development of Soviet military technology got. Uh, we can judge it only by the reports that the military themselves chose to reveal. But uh, there could still be very interesting developments hidden in uh, Soviet military archives that would uh, enrich the history of technology.